Alright guys, so welcome back to the channel. If you're new, my name is Bobby. Guys, super interesting video today. We're going to react to what priests find in Islam. Stories of Christians who converted to Islam on the channel towards eternity. It's truly amazing to see how distorted the supposed battle between Christianity and Islam is presented online. Lately, we had many debates between Christians and Muslims, and people really think that there is some sort of fight between them and that either camp is winning in the online sphere. But the reality of things is Christianity is dying in real life. Churches are empty and Christianity has the most apostates, people leaving the religion. On the other hand, Islam is the fastest growing religion not only due to birth rates, but due to conversion rates. And moreover, Islam is truly practiced. If you look into people that identify as Christian nowadays, we really have to use this term, those people might see themselves as Christians because they're celebrating Christmas and Easter and whatnot, but they don't really participate in the traditions of the church. A Muslim, on the other hand, will practice Islam. And the same holds true, of course, with reverts to Islam. Once people revert to Islam, they become very practicing. So the truth of the real world is that Christianity is in steady decline. So far so that even priests accept Islam. All right, guys, but before we jump into the video, as always, if you enjoy my content, leave me a thumbs up, subscribe to the channel if you haven't already, and check out the links in the description box below. Super important to further support my work. And now, with no further ado, let's have a look. Ustad Ahmed, you have been rector of the Islamic University of Rotterdam in the Netherlands for 23 years. Yes. You've been a means okay. of guidance for Europe. hundreds of Christians to become Muslims. So what do you think impresses Christians most about Islam? This is very interesting. It is the belief in the afterlife. In the way we understand it, the concept of afterlife does not exist in Christianity or Judaism. There was a strict Orthodox what? Christian. I have probably explained this before. It's such a sweet event. His family is also Orthodox. He has cancer and is about to die. He has listened to the live broadcast of our brother Osman. He said, bring him. Osman went to him and answered all his questions about Islam. He was very sick. After that, he said, I will become a Muslim. His whole family was against it. Orthodox are the strictest Christians. Yes, it's absolutely correct that the Orthodox are the strictest Christians. If you've never seen my channel, I come from an Orthodox Christian background myself. And later, I'm going to explain a little bit more about that. But first, he mentioned the afterlife and that it's very different in Christianity, Judaism and Islam. I would absolutely disagree with this. Because all three Abrahamic faiths speak about heaven and hell, the resurrection, the judgment day, etc. This is not really the big difference. The big difference between Islam and the other religions is, of course, Tawhid. This is what truly makes Christians accept Islam. Once they realize that they've been worshipping a man, i.e. Jesus, and they understand that nobody is worthy of worship but God alone, and that this is the prophetic message throughout the ages. This is the main difference. So I really don't understand why he would list the afterlife as the main reason for conversion. But coming back to Orthodox Christianity, yes, Orthodox Christianity is the strictest form of Christianity. Even the name itself suggests this, of course, because Orthodox means the right way, the right path, the right religion. On the Balkan, this is where my family is from, it is called Pravoslavia. This literally means the right religion. So therefore, if it's packaged as the right religion, people, of course, wonder why you would ever leave that path. Why would you choose a false religion if you already have the right religion? Moreover, the Orthodox Church is the oldest Christian church. It was there from the get-go of church Christianity. I'm not going to say that the Orthodox Church was there when Jesus was around. I don't believe that. But in terms of the establishment, Orthodox Christianity was the first. Orthodox are the strictest Christians. This man then persistently called Brother Osman and in time became a Muslim. He took his Shahada in Ulu Mosque, Turkey. Then he passed away a day later. The Messenger of Allah, peace be upon him, says, A little work, but a great reward. A day or two later, our brother Osman saw him in a dream at night. His name was Michael. He sees that Michael is coming towards him, handsome, wearing a tie and a suit. He asks, Michael, how are you? He says, Osman, I'm wonderful, wonderful. I am so happy. May Allah be pleased with you. This is the example of belief in the afterlife. Well, do you have any other memories I really don't like understand. this? Yet again, I really don't understand the connection with the afterlife now because the afterlife is, as I said already, promised to every religious person, be it a Jew or be it a Christian. 
However, getting there, how you get there, is of course the crucial factor here. That if you commit shirk, you cannot enter. This is truly the important factor, not the concept of the afterlife, but the concept of the religion. But 1,500 people were watching it that evening. Later, many people also watched the program. One of them is the daughter of a priest who is a graduate student. She also became a Muslim. They were listening to our brother Osman. Her father was also at home. They were listening together. The priest went crazy to the answers of Osman, but couldn't say anything. In the last minutes of the program, a PhD student said, what do you think about fate? The third issue that attracts the most attention of Christians and Jews is belief in fate. In the way we believe, they have no such thing as belief in fate. You see what I mean? Normally it should no, exist, No, I don't see but it's what over. you mean at all, man. It's Maybe the translation is really bad and what he's truly saying isn't coming across. But if he's speaking about the predestination of Allah, Qadr Allah, if this is truly what he means, then if we look into Christianity, there are such concepts as well. So predestination you will find too in Protestantism, for example. In Orthodox and Catholic Christianity, it's a bit different. It's not about predestination. However, they are speaking about God's will and that everything happens within God's will. However, there is a synergy between our free will and God's will. However, the concept of fate is of course found in Christianity, in Judaism, etc. This is not the main reason why people revert. I really don't get this video, man. The main reason should always be Tawheed. Normally it should exist, but it's over. It's not there. When the PhD student what asked that, there, the priest what says to this? his daughter, Ha, huh, now your imam has collapsed. Because when we are asked about faith, we say only God knows. So the Lord, our master knows, our father knows. Of course, when the priest sees fate being explained with a beautiful example, the example well, of he elevator, just he says, my daughter. This is exactly what Jesus preached even in the New Testament of the Bible. He says only the father knows, right? So that only God knows, yet again, this understanding of God's will is of course found in Christianity. And listen, guys, I'm not saying this to defend Christianity now. No, I am about truth. So we have to be truthful and lay out everything transparently and objectively. Fate, the afterlife, etc. is found within Christianity and Judaism. Instead of pretending that it's not there, we should point out what is unique to Islam. This man is impossible to deal with. Islam is the true religion. The priest did not become a Muslim, but his daughter became a Muslim, alhamdulillah. I mean, these are, of course, amazing truths. They I also totally want to say chopped this. up it's the video. It doesn't make any thing. sense. Our friends Honestly, gave the letters this whole video does make sense, Nursi to another priest. While reading it, it gets he came to the 17th letter. Consolation of the death of a child. The man was shocked. It talks about both belief in the afterlife and what happens to children after death. And the chapter is full of amazing verses and explanations about these. Wildanum mukhalladun. There is the mention of eternal children. I mean, this was a great event. Then the priest loved it. And because there was COVID-19 at that time, there was no physical church attendance. They were doing sermons via Zoom. The following Sunday, the priest teaches the consolation of the death of a child from the 17th letter to the Christians who were listening. I mean, he did not say this is from Bediou Zaman Said Nursi. Did not say this is from this book or that. It was just the text of the sermon. He has had a lot of phone calls. Most of them asked, from which book did you learn this? He had a priest friend whose son died at the age of 10. When he died, the death was so difficult for him because he had no faith in the afterlife in the way we have. He resented God and became an unbeliever. They call it agnostic these days. So he neither believes That's nor disbelieves. Totally he also crazy. I'm going to cut off the video very soon after if it that, continues like this. I really have zero tolerance for lies. I cannot stand such things. We always have to speak the truth, even if it goes against our biases. So now that this priest experienced the death of a child and this shook his faith, fine, understandable. But please do not blame it on the lacking, allegedly lacking concept of faith within Christianity. Because as I said already 10,000 times, this is not true. So I would like to summarize the answer to this question with these points. Okay, I believe okay. that this good news of Bedouzaman will come true in Europe very soon. He says, my hope is that this Islamic European state will start with the Netherlands, but only Allah knows. No one knows the unseen except Allah. Ustaz, in your book, The Great Confession from the Bell to the Minaret, at the meeting of the Union of Churches in 1984, you have a statement about the decision taken by the priests. What is this decision and how do you interpret this decision? Um, this is very important. This was the first time that Christian archbishops accepted. The prophethood of our prophet, peace be upon him. I mean, you know, in 1984 and also in Vienna, as you know, Christians never accepted the prophethood of our prophet, peace be upon him. And the Christian World Council of Churches meet every 10 years. They are inviting the archbishops from the whole world. For a week, they hold discussions in that places like villages. The Union of Churches publishes this meeting every 10 years, but they did not publish 
publish it in 1984. We were not aware of that. One day at that meeting in a village called St. Piltin in Austria on March 10th, 1984, we did not know about it. Now look at the decisions taken here, especially the beginning. Conference of European Churches. Witness to God in a secular Europe. It means testimony to Allah in secular Europe. The secretary general of this meeting was an important priest in the Netherlands, Jan Slomp, who was 89 or 93 years old. One day he visited me at the university in the rector's office. He said, Mr. Rector, how are you? I said, thank you. He said, no, you are not well, you are guilty. I was surprised and asked, what is it, Mr. Jan Slump? He is a great pastor, the secretary general of that meeting. He said, you Muslims are guilty and deserve punishment. I said, what is it? Why are you accusing us for? He said, why didn't you tell us the beauties of Islam until now? If we go to hell, you are to blame. I said, Jan Slump, what are you saying? He took the book out and started talking about it. He said, Honorable Rector, we met in 1984. We negotiated for a week. As a result of these negotiations, we took the following decisions. The decisions are long. You can show them one by one. They say, at the final decision of the churches, as a result of the negotiations, it was understood that the Quran, which means the word of God, is no different from our Bible and the Torah. There's only one difference. Human words have entered and mixed into our Bible and Torah, but the Quran is the pure words of Allah. All right, listen, guys, I know you wanted me to react to this video, but this video is absolutely atrocious. As I said already in the beginning, all of those false claims about Christianity, unacceptable. And now he's speaking about this supposed conference that happened in 1989 in Austria, God in secular Europe. And they allegedly came to the conclusion that Prophet Muhammad وسلم, is a true prophet. But there's absolutely no such documentation. I honestly spent now over 20 minutes here searching the internet looking for any type of statement where Christians or the church accepted Prophet Muhammad. And there's absolutely nothing to be found. We have to be absolutely truthful in our words. As I said already multiple times throughout the video, what is really important is the message of Islam, the Tawheed. This should be taught to the Christians. And then if they want to accept Islam, alhamdulillah, and if they do not want to, then it's their loss. But please don't come up with all of those fantastical claims. There's only one difference. Human words have entered and mixed into our Bible and Torah, but the Quran is the pure words of Allah. They have confessed. As for a second example, Christians believe that the last prophet means the greatest prophet that is why they do not accept the Prophet Muhammad, peace be upon him. They say, if we call Muhammad a prophet, then he will be superior to our Lord, Jesus. So they have demolished it. In the final decision, they said, Muhammad is the last prophet in the line of prophets since the prophet Abraham. But they also said, well, this does not mean that he is greater than Jesus. This is of course a mistake. Let's come to their third confession. This one is more shocking. It is about the concept of Allah and God. They said Allah as Muslims believe and the God we believe in are essentially the same. But there is only one difference. We have opposite views on attributes of God because Christians see Jesus peace be upon him is a reflection of God and so on. But in our case, a God person. Almighty is without any human attributes. These were the exact phrases used in that conference. Now I have put this in the 150 page book I wrote. For example, in the chapters on belief okay, in Allah. Okay, I'm gonna cut it off prophet. here. All right, guys, and this is it for today's video. I'm going to cut it off here. Very disappointing, as I said already multiple times. This is not truthful. This is not factual. No evidence has been listed whatsoever. And moreover, I believe that the channel really did this man even a further disservice by chopping up that video and translating it very badly. So the points are coming across even less strong. Honestly, a five minute video of a bunch of priests accepting Islam would have been much more impactful than this speech. All right, guys, but this is it for today's video. If you liked it, still leave it a thumbs up, subscribe to the channel if you haven't already, check out the links in the description box below to further support my work. And as always, may God bless you all. Much love and peace. <laughs>